the storm was talking about it so much. <laughs> and I figured I'd figure this up in this uh, Eternal Sonata. And I like this game. I need to get a little bit farther into it. But uh, the battle system is great. Uh, it's more of... It's, it's kind of weird to explain the battle system because the battle system pretty much reflects on this little meter that's on your lower right hand side of the screen where uh, once you start attacking the meter will start depleting so you'll uh, you have to attack them you have to keep attacking them until the meter is completely gone and then you can defend and you gotta press if you press the button the right way you defend too and it reminds me of another game hopefully I have it with me um, and it looks like I don't, but I <laughs> I do have a uh, PS2 game that's called uh, Arts and Nautical 2. And that is a weird game, let me tell you. Uh, there's a lot of innuendos. A lot. A lot. <laughs> like, I'm not stressing it enough. There is a lot of innuendos there. So if you're not into that kind of thing, then uh, you, might be a little, uh, you might be a little uncomfortable because there's a lot of those. But the uh, battle system is really good, and it, here's the thing: like the story is actually really good, but these in your windows kind of like come out of nowhere, and you're like, okay, I didn't expect that, because you know you're so used to you're trying to get into the story, and then the in your just pops up, you're just like, oh god. <laughs> so uh, it's a really fun game, though. I really do enjoy it. I put a lot of hours into it, though. It's a really good game. The battle system is pretty much similar to that. Uh, next up, oh, clear this out. I have to clear this out because I pretty much have the uh, bundle here. But it's Dance Dance Revolution. Uh, I paid this up for about 30 bucks. And of course, it's a rhythm based game. It came with uh, a pad, which I pretty much have because I bought this. Uh, this is a uh, this is the box set. You can tell by the back. It's a really fun game. The thing is. There is. It seems like there's a lot more English songs. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot more American songs than Japanese songs. Was something that I felt was kind of weird. But maybe it's because of the licensing issue. Maybe they had problems like licensing the songs and putting them, you know, over here in America. Maybe that was the thing. Don't really know. But hopefully, uh, the next DDR game they come out with, they can have a more evenly balanced version of uh, Japanese soundtracks along with uh, American ones. Because uh, most of the uh, DDR stuff, where well, the Japanese songs, most of those are like as DLC. And I hate DLC. <laughs> There's very few DLCs that's worth it. And buying all of those uh, songs that's on the DLC is kind of weird. Uh, hopefully, they drop in price or something. Maybe that can happen. I don't know. But hopefully, that'll be it. Because if so, uh, I'll probably get it anyway. Because I really do like the Japanese songs for the game. Uh, next up is Nier, and this is a very, seems like a lot of people kind of gave it a bad score. I don't know why. Uh, it's a pretty underrated RPG. It's an action RPG, by the way. Uh, you play as this guy, who's, uh, <laughs> it's so hard. I, I haven't played this in so long, and I need to get back into it, because the story is really good. Uh, but nonetheless, my favorite character, I think her name is Kaine. I don't know, I think, I'll try and put in the annotations or something for her name, but she's obviously my favorite character, and you'll pretty much, if you play the game, you know why, but the story's really good, the battle system is definitely unique, uh, you pretty much fight against these enemies, and uh, the more enemies that you defeat, you get these little word things for each, uh, I guess it's like for each enemy, you get these little bits and pieces of word phrases, where you can use to enhance your attack, your uh, magic power. All sorts of cool stuff like that, and the bosses are really cool too. Uh, love the music, by the way. The music's done really nicely. Uh, the vocals are really addicting to hear too. So it's a it's a really beautiful game, and I hope they make a sequel to it. Hopefully, um, I haven't beat the game, so I can't really say any spoilers. Uh, next up, Skate Three. Uh, very good game. If you play Skate Two, you're really not missing out much on Skate Three. It's pretty much the same thing. Uh, the difference is, is that it's more focused on a team. So you get to rally up with different uh, people, make your own team members, and pretty much take over the entire uh, tournaments that that's offered. I mean, you still got your death races. Uh, you got like these Hall of Meat competitions where you have to break a certain amount of bones a certain amount of times, and it's really fun to do, actually. Uh, you have death races, uh, trick contests, you know, typical stuff. So it's a really fun game. 
Uh, what's also cool is that uh, if your friend has it, if one of your friends has Skate 3, is that they'll have these little AI uh, uh, versions of your friends and they'll actually skate through the city and you know you'll run across them sometimes and it's really cool to see. So I really do enjoy the game. Next up, Magna Carta 2. This is an RPG, an action RPG, and it's a really fun one. Uh, they have a very unique way of leveling up and it pretty much has like these different slots where it seems like it's a map where it's like a little mapping system where you can't unlock this move until you unlock this move first so uh, there's a certain way let's just say uh, your character can do like a parry kind of move and you can uh, defend and attack at the same time something like that you'll have to improve their defensive skills first before you can unlock the parry move. So things like that, really good to see. And uh, I say, it's a two-day set, so I don't know if you can see that. But it's a two-day set, and it's really fun so far. Really do enjoy it. Next up, oh man, I haven't played this game in a while either. Uh, Assassin's Creed 2. Uh, I like this game so far. It definitely does offer a Prince of Persia feel. And I really do like it. It's a lot of methods of assassinations. You get all these cool little upgrades. Um, I never played the first one. I probably should have gotten the first one because uh, maybe storyline wise, so I can catch up and see exactly what's going on. So at this point, I do like the game. The combat system is really cool. So yeah, it's a good game. Um, next up, I'm close to getting through with this one uh, Mirror's Edge. And this is a free running game, it's a first person free running game. And it's very addictive. It's a really addictive game. Uh, you play as this lady. Her name's Fate, and she's in this little organization. Who she's pretty much like the underdog, where she fights against, uh, you know, pretty much the law enforcers. Well, let's just put that in quotes. Um, but it's a really good game. She's a really unique hero. I mean, I will say that. Uh, but her, she has like all these free running skills. She runs the walls. Um, she slides, she slides underneath things, uh, she she can uh, grip it to pose, and the way that they have it set up is that they're highlighted, like red, and you know, you'll see like these highlights where it pretty much tells you exactly what to grab, where to go, where to jump from one place to the next, and in case you're lost, because sometimes there's such a big city to go around, and it's not really a free roaming kind of game where you can just go anywhere you want, because it's pretty much a destination that you have to go to in these stage. So what they did was, in case you're lost and you really don't know where to go, you can press a button and they'll direct, they'll direct you to uh, what direction you have to go in order to complete the mission. But it's a really fun game. I love it. I really love it. I'm surprised that EA didn't make a uh, sequel to this, didn't announce it yet. Still kind of ticked off about that because you think they would have done it already, but whatever. Next up, The Blob 2, which is the most colorful game that you'll probably ever see this generation. Uh, well, can't say that because uh, Child of Eden is out, so maybe maybe that'll be some competition for them. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it's a really good game. You play as the blob of course. Uh, you color the city. The city is like black and white, and you pretty much color the whole entire city. It may sound like, oh, you know, it's kind of pointless, but it's really good. The music in this game is completely, like, phenomenal. Like, it's definitely a unique feel for all the music that's in the game. Uh, you have all these missions where you have to paint the buildings a certain color. A lot of platforming elements, by the way. Um, but it's a really, really good game. I really recommend uh, anybody who likes uh, kind of like an out-of-the-box kind of game to really pick this up. It's a really good game. Next. Man, I'm probably over 10 minutes. <laughs> As much as I want to keep it 10 minutes, I'm probably over it. But next up is Way to Samurai 3, where you can determine, uh, you pretty much make decisions, where uh, you can decide what forces you want to join. And it's a really unique game. I'm kind of stuck on it. Like, I really don't know exactly what I'm supposed to do, but they have missions on the map. But I kind of wish the map was displayed where you don't have to keep pressing the pause button in order to see it. I wish it was, like, displayed, like, in real time. But, um... Other than that, I really do like the game. There's a lot of upgrades you can get. A lot of weapons you can use. Really cool game. I do like it. So I gotta get farther into it. Next up is uh, Warriors of Roti. And if you've played uh, Samurai Warriors, it's pretty much similar to that. 
But the difference is with this game, you don't create your character. It's pretty much a roster of characters. It seems like I think they're characters from previous uh, Dynasty Warriors or Semi Warriors games, and they're pretty much I think they're united into one game. Maybe it's a crossover. I'm not fairly sure. But here's the thing that I kind of didn't understand <laughs> is that when I bought the game, I bought the game, and I'm like, you know, I want to see what the manual is all about. So they show you the manual. It's pretty cool, man. It's pretty much the same as the game cover. But here's the thing. Every single one of these pages are in Japanese. But look at that. I don't get it. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, because <laughs> everything else is in English. I can read everything else fine. But the manual is in Japanese. I don't know. It's very weird, but if you play Samurai Wars, it pretty much follows the same thing. 